Hi everyone, thanks once again for stopping by, taking the time out of your day to check out my channel, my videos, to check out my work, guys. I love space. I love capturing um, the secrets that are out there. There's so many things going on that uh, people aren't getting the chance to see, and this is just something that's amazing with the camera. You can capture that moment, and sometimes you can capture moments that are very, um, how can I say, Things that don't go on every day, you know, this is why we have to keep our eyes in the sky. This is Corona Borealis. We're ready, we're ready to install the finder scope bracket. There are two screws that are supposed to be placed, but they said that there were holes at the back of the scope. I didn't see any holes. I had to take out the actual screws that were there. I've seen it on top of the scope, but I put it on the left. On the left side is where they recommended to put it. You'll need a flashlight to see. Um, where the screw is to be sure it's aligned and then you just stick the screw in both of them tighten them to be sure that they're in place and i would put it tight enough so that it doesn't move but i definitely would not try to overstrip it definitely because the mirrors are just inside of this <laughs> beautiful optical tube so be sure the screws are out too when you're putting the finder scope in now there's a rubber o-ring that you're going to slide over the back of the finder scope and you're going to leave it um, in other words listen you're going to try to align the scope so that it's even and flush at the end of the bracket it doesn't pass like so and then once the finder scope is inside you slid the ring on the rubber ring is going to hold it in place from the, on the top bracket and that's where that rubber ring should be aligned at on your scope it will sit on the top bracket and that way comfortably You'll be able to tighten the finder scope in. What are the finder scope specifications? Uh, the Edge HD telescope comes with a 9 times 50 finder scope. The specifications for a finder scope stand for the magnification and the aperture in millimeters of the scope. So a 90 by 50 finder magnifies objects 9 times and has a 50 millimeter objective lens. All right, so now it's time to remove the visual back from the rear of the tube. This has already been done. Now I am attaching the threaded ring of two inch diagonal to the rear cell of the telescope. Now the diagonal mirror is attached and ready for the eyepiece. I'm going to take out the, um, loosen the thumb screws on the side of the diagonal and I'll remove the 1.25 adapter from the barrel on the diagonal. And now I'm ready to install the luminous two inch eyepiece. This is beautiful. So I'm unloosening the screws to be sure not to scratch it. I'm going to fit it in nice and snug at the back of the telescope. Then I'm going to tighten it in and I'm going to be ready. So now guys, the telescope is actually all set. And we're waiting for the converter box and we're uh, going to be ready. Say where we're plugged in right now here. I'll take the cap off for you. There you go. A brand new 14 inch telescope with the full kisser ready. Everything, the screws, uh, primary mirrors unlocked after transportation. The mirrors, uh, mirror locks and clutches unlocked. Focus are ready to focus and ready to zoom up and plug this baby in to collimate it and to calibrate it and to do whatever I have to do. So here's a meter stick, a 36 inches, guys. The whole optical tube, the length is now 36 inches with the eyepiece. With the camera, it'll be even longer then. So that's one big, glorious mama of a telescope. An optical tube is 36 inches long right now with the eyepiece and the diagonal star at the back. These are the two telescopes I've used, uh, the Astro Masters in the background there. 
on the left, you can see that there's no uh, mirror locks on that one. There's one mirror and of course, just the focuser, beautiful telescope SLT on the left, magnificent, 1500 millimeters. I've been working with it. And that, that's what we're going up on the moon with this weekend. Hopefully tonight, guys. See what I'm pointing to you right now with the light? These two screws have to be completely loosened and taken out with the tool, the Allen key that they furnish you. Why? It's to unlock the mirrors after transportation. This is a beautiful option. If you're going to transport it or change towns with it or bring it in a truck somewhere, um, you stick it in the same box they suggest that came it came in because the pads are all lined up to hold it in and you completely take the screws out. They will not fall out. They're held in the casting, but they will remain loose and extruded out of the rear cell of the telescope optical uh, tube. So you have the focus on the right here. Now you can move the focuser considering that this side is counterclockwise to be sure that up and down both of these clutches are loosened. Then you can focus on whatever you want. And once you're focused, relock it clockwise, like so. And then you can do also your astrophotography and you'll be sure the mirrors will not move. A good suggestion if you have a wire, the more you zoom out, the more vibration will show up and will appear in your image. So a, a remote to be able to take the photos is even better. And once you're all set up and filming, back away from the telescope and let it do its magic. As always, the magnificent list of people who contribute to this channel. I should write all of the thousands of people that are here now. Um, you're all contributing. You're in your own way, absolutely, with the shares, the comments. Welcome, everyone. All these beautiful donations and wonderful people that are um, helping out to the channel and contributing at the same time in your search and research along with me as we all learn together in all these mysteries in space. I interact with Steve Olson, WSO YouTube channel. Check him out. He interviews many other channels and he's pretty up to date on what's going on up there in the sky.